So, if I wanted to give your Godot objects smooth animations with highly customizable easings, and then you found out that built-ins like Lerp were lacking a bit, well, then you'll want to learn about two other cool and lesser-known Godot built-ins, SmoothStep and Ease. Now, just before we dive in, did you know that thanks to all of your amazing support, I just released an idle incremental game about stars and constellations called Lightem? It's available on Steam, for Windows, Mac and Linux, for less than 5 bucks, and it's basically designed to be a chill and relaxed experience, to learn more about the 80 plus real constellations, or just invent your own and create a unique night sky. So if you're curious, be sure to have a look at the free demo, add it to your wishlist, share it with your friends, and if you try and enjoy it, you can also leave a review on the games page, this is the best way to help support this project. But anyway. Okay, so let's say I've got a basic 3D scene, like this one. My goal here will be to have some cars and trucks that move between the start and finish line with different kind of scripted movements. For now, I have just one track, and this will be our baseline, so we'll have it move at a constant speed from here to there using Lerp. Also, to play with our object positions more precisely, I've decided to add a basic UI with a horizontal slider that goes between 0 and 1, and that will update the position of my cars whenever I drag its handle and update its value. The move logic will be handled by the script on our root node, over there, that for now just looks like this. As you can see, the idea is that first we define the move range for vehicles. This is important because the built-ins we'll discover today work with normalized ranges, meaning from 0 to 1, but we want to map the movement to the entire start to finish range in our game scene, so we have to know what our bounds are. Then the move vehicles function is the callback for our horizontal sliders value changed signal. This is where we'll recompute the position of each car or truck according to its own logic, and for now that's just a basic lerped truck position. So for this truck, all we have to do is update the Z component of its global 3D position with the built-in lerp function by passing it the constant bounds of our move range and the direct value of the horizontal slider as a ratio. If we run the scene, this gives us a simple linear movement, controlled by our slider, that we can now compare all our other movements to. But of course, yeah, this is just a baseline, because it feels really stiff and weird in a game, especially if we use an animation or a twin to play this movement automatically, instead of manually with our slider. This sudden start and stop looks mechanical, and it really downs the juiciness of our game. So let's try a little improvement, and add a second car on the road. It will still move between these two points, but this time, its movement will use the smooth step function. Basically, we'll update our move vehicle's callback function to also modify the Z position of this SUV object as follows, so we're still going between our constant Z limits, but this time, rather than passing our lerp function or normalized horizontal slider value directly, we're wrapping it in the smooth step function. What this will do is transform our linear movement into a smoother one with an is in and is out. If we retry our demo and update our slider, you see that the two vehicles indeed move side by side between the same start and finish point, but they don't accelerate and decelerate the same way. The SUV doesn't move linearly, so it first takes a bit of time to speed up, then it has a burst of speed in the middle, and finally it slows down to reach the finish line at the same time as the track, but with different easings. Now, if you want to go even further and you think that Godot's smooth step functions easings aren't right for you, then you can take a look at the ease function. The idea is that once again it can make a normalized range nonlinear with some easings, but this time you control what the easings are thanks to this curve parameter. If you take a look at the cheat sheet referenced in the official docs, you'll notice that the curve parameter is a float number that is usually somewhere between minus 5 and plus 5, and that will determine the shape of the curve that remaps your normalized range with easings. So let's say that we add a third vehicle on the road, 
and we also give our script a new exported curve float parameter that we can set in the inspector. Finally, in our UI, let's add a little curve display object. Here it's just a panel container, but it has a script that will draw our custom ism curve based on the curve float value we defined before, so that we can really visualize what our easings currently look like for this third car. In our main script, this means that we have the following updates. First, we have our exported curve parameter. Then, in our ready function, we tell the script on our curve display object what this float value is, so that it can draw the matching curve. And finally, in our move vehicles callback, we update the position of our third vehicle in a similar way as before, except that this time we use the is function with our custom curve value. The curve display script is pretty basic, it uses the draw function, which is a great way to code and so dynamically show more or less complex visuals in a 2D context, and allows you to benefit from a bunch of cool Godot drawing tools. If you're curious, I actually made an entire tutorial on that topic, so feel free to have a look over here. But so anyway, in our case, this draw function will use an arbitrary resolution for the x-axis that determines the number of points to sample, and so for each point, it gets the matching y value using the curve determined by our float parameter. And finally, it uses those points to trace the curve. And so there we go. In the end, our demo contains all three cars and trucks together on the road, with the position of each controlled by the horizontal slider at the top, their own easings, and even a visual of the custom curve for our speedster car in the top right corner. We can play around with the slider to quickly see how each vehicle speeds up and slows down, and of course we can change the curve float parameter in our main script to change the easings of the movement of our third car. And that's it for today. I really hope you liked this quick tip, don't hesitate to react in the comments, and subscribe to the channel if you want more videos, and of course a huge thanks to my Patreon members for the support, and to you for watching. And as always, take care.